Hey, what's going on? So, I wanted to do this video, and I want to give you the scriptures in advance. And there's so many I could use, but in this case, I'm using this specific one. That's in Matthew chapter 23, verse 37 to 39. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. The city that kills the prophets and stones God's messengers. How often I have wanted to gather your children together as a hen protects her chicks beneath her wings, but you wouldn't let me. And now, look, your house left to you, empty and desolate. For I tell you this, you will never see me again until you say, bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. I give you that because this is the back what I have to say here right now people want from me supernatural things like hey show me of when you seen heaven show me of when you see hell show me the people you seen in hell see show me the people you seen in heaven show me these things you have much to meditate on here and now of what's in the natural but you refuse to you ain't trying here like you write it off you write it off like, hey, this is not important. What's important is who's in hell, who's in heaven, talk about heaven, talk about hell. You, like, how can I compare this generation to children playing in the square? Let's move forward. And even in those words, how can I compare this generation like children playing in the square? That's scripture. I'm going to say it again. How can I compare this generation like children playing in the school? Like children playing in the square? This generation. How can I compare this generation? You get the point. Let's move forward. Why did I give this? For this reason, bear with me. You know, I want to give you this analogy. I would give it to my mother figure. My mother figure would hear it, and she would really hear it like, Ray, I understand that. Like, I understand that. Just think about the people that you're trying to address. Okay. A lot of a lot of women in ignorance sit, sit here and cite this for misogynistic. They're cited for misogynist. You carry this hate speech towards women. You put them down. To be honest with you, the women that conduct themselves in this way, I'm content with you thinking that because bottom line is I don't like you. And this way that you keep alive is to be destroyed. I just don't have time to explain it to you. Let's move forward. There was a, there's this analogy, there's this parable I like to give. There was a dense girl, a dense girl with pigtails. And this dense girl, her body, she was dense. Her mom was not strong, but she was, but her body was strong. In other words, appetizing to a man. Her body was appetizing to a man. And she was in her apartment, in her room, drawing in a coloring book. And as she was drawing in this coloring book, she recognized that there was a color that she needed. And she did not have the color to color this in. And she's, and it frustrated her, like, I'm missing a color, I'm missing something. And she's drawing in this coloring book. Someone knocks on the door, dump, dump, dump. And she says, come in. And as he came in, he came in. And she's still looking at the coloring book. I'm missing a coloring book. What is it that I'm missing? You know, I see something, da, 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 and it's a color missing. And as he's listening to her words approaching her, he picks her up from a chair and bends her over and has his way with her. And when he's done, he just puts his jaw, you know, he just leaves. As quick as he entered, he left. And a lot of you, you know where I'm coming from. He left. And she was in a place of frustration, like, I just need to help with this coloring. Like I, I'm really trying to put this. There's something I'm missing, and I need something to help me out. What is there's something missing? I need something to to to. Like yeah, he came and went, but I need something to 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 color this color that I know is missing. And so the door knocks again. Don't don't don't. And she says, "Come in." 
you know, with a with a little bit more reluctance. And she comes and he comes in and she's saying, hey, um, and she says exercising just a little bit more awareness, just a little bit more. And she comes in and she says to the person that entered, hey, it's a coloring that I'm missing. It's a color I'm missing. I'm trying to color in this house. It's a color that's missing. Do you know what it is? And as she, she's talking, he takes out his member. And he has his way with the aura until he, you know, until he's done. He puts his member away and he leaves. And she's just, you know, left, left with this. Like, I needed someone to help me color this. I need someone to help me color this. And the first two just came and left. And he just left, like, and there was a third guest, dumb, 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 and she's still not together, and she's like, come in, and as she's coming in, she's trying to prepare, wipe herself, prepare herself, and he looks at her, and and, and he says, hey, what's going on with you? And he's not looking at how appetizing her body looks. He's not looking at how she looks, you know, sexually appealing wise. He's not. Hey, what you doing? And she says, with great reluctance, you know, I'm trying to color in this house. And there is a color that is missing. And when he heard this, he was like, oh, okay. And he went in his pocket, he got a handkerchief. And he handed it to her because she could see she was trying to gather herself. She's just trying to gather herself. And he hands it to her and she accepts it with great reluctance. Great reluctance. And she prepares herself, wipes herself, you know, where she's somewhat presentable. And he says, I know that you know, it's, he's not even looking at how appetizing she looks or how body looks. Oh, I know what you need. You need this color. You need, you know, and she's not even, and she's puzzled because he's not even looking at her body or how curvaceous she is or how beautiful she looks, you know, to arouse a man. He's not. Oh, I know what you need. And the person that's speaking happens to be a painter, happens to be someone who's an artist. And he says, as he's not even looking at how appetizing the body looks, oh, he's looking at what she's trying to draw. Oh, I know what you need. What you need is a color beige to go with the compliments of the house. Because you already have a house laid in this foundation. So it would look better if you had this colors with the thing. And he's not even looking at it. And, and as she's talking, and he went into his bag, and he hands her a paintbrush with the paint that she needs to color in her house. And when she seen this, she was so, she, she felt for reasons beyond her, she was so uncomfortable, beyond reasons of explanation. And she screamed to the guests, get out, get out, get out. And, and, and the person that came in, the third guest was like, hey, all I'm trying to do is give you a paintbrush. Get out, get out, get out of my house. Get out! And two, two females hear this. And the females that hear this, they come in like, hey, what's going on? And the man is keeping a distance saying, hey, I'm just trying to give her papers. Hey, get out. Get out before I call the cops. Get out before I call the authorities. I was just trying to give you a paintbrush. Get out before I call the cops. Get out before I call the authorities. All I wanted to do is give you a paper. Get out. And he sit here and he was just like, just confused because he's just trying to help with what she sees she's struggling with. And she's looking at it and he's just like, you know what, fine. And the two women that came in, their names were arrogance and pride. 
Void of virtue. These two were. Arrogance and pride. Void of virtue. Conducted themselves in ways without virtue. And the guests just left. Sad, angry, puzzled, knowing what was needed. And the two guests, the two the two women was just like, Hey, you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Alright, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna go ahead and go. And they left. They slowly left as the as the as the the uninvited guest was treated. They just left after he left. And the uninvited, you know, the person who seek the aid with the paintbrush, he was just puzzled like. You just claimed you needed help, and I was here to help you. And so in turn, this person just was puzzled, but he left. And she and the two immoral guests, they left. And as they left, she had a napkin and she was just wiping herself with the napkin, the handkerchief that the third guest left her. And after they left, there was a fourth guest. The fourth guest came in. And when the fourth guest came in, she said, you know, she he just came in. He didn't not. He just came in. And he, you know, and she looked at him after she was kind of slowly gathering herself. Hey, I need a paintbrush. And he just had his way with her. He didn't care about her. He didn't care about her being. He didn't care nothing about her. Had his way with her. And when he was, he just had his way with her. In, a, in, a, in, a, in an unpleasant way, he had his way with her. And then he just left. And as she, as the fourth guest, as the fourth, fourth guest left, what she said to herself was this: Why didn't I get that paintbrush? Why didn't I accept that paint with the paintbrush? Why didn't I accept the paint, that paintbrush, from the third guest? She couldn't answer this, but she asked herself this consistently: Why didn't I accept the brush? Raymond, why are you telling me this? You need to tell me. Why? I tell a lot of women this. I give it to them. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 28. I give this to you. Not for you to be offended. If you're offended, you're offended. But I tell you plain. If you want to be offended, be offended. But I tell you this. Offense maintained without correction in turn is hypocrisy. Offense maintained without correction is hypocrisy because you could cite another person for a quality that they don't have while you yourself do not have no desire to maintain it and so you could cite a person for not having something that you yourself have no desire to have you don't have no desire to have this you genuinely didn't. But you in, in but in great hypocrisy, you could maintain this. Get the connection. Now I'm not saying this to ridicule no one. But what I'm boldly declaring is this. Offense maintained without correction is hypocrisy. So you could cite someone. You could cite a man, you could cite your husband or whatever for lack of character while you yourself have not maintained this. That's hypocrisy. So you could sit here and say to a man, hey, you need to man up and accept responsibility for your actions despite the fact that I have no desire to do the same within myself. Hypocrisy. Raymond, do you know that's very misogynistic? I tell you this, I hope it offends you. Genuine, because what's boldly declared is this I have no desire to be upright as the person that I'm meeting with an unjust rebuke. That's the point of it all. You have no desire to maintain what's kept alive despite the fact that you know it for what it is. I say this to you, not trying to disrespect you. If you feel disrespected, you feel disrespected. I cannot help this. Though disrespect is not the intention. What am I saying? 
whole there are many men. You know, there are many men. I feel for I tell you this. Ah, Raymond the Raymond 86. I feel for no woman like I feel for my brother. That's misogynistic. No, it's not. It's this. This very existence that you, that I live, this very existence. When I look as I do this video, the the hairs of my beard go gray. The older I get, it'll show, you know, the hairs of my beard go gray. When you look at yourself, and when you looked at yourself at the age of 22, and then as time would go on, you would see that your body does not maintain what it maintained at the age of 20. That's the point. That's the exact point that I'm trying to make. This very existence that you and I live, that we dwell, was a reflection because Adam loved his wife and he loved and he felt for his wife so much that he neglected the words of the Most High. Hence the problems that you and I live with to this very day. We have no idea. We don't have no comprehension of the existence that we have no idea what we force the Most High. We have no idea what we force the Most High to do towards us. We don't. We do not. We do not. We do not. This existence that you live, that I live, that we all live, was a reflection that Adam loved his wife more than he loved the Most High. I just don't have time to persuade you of this. But in the more one will say and say, hey, but he should have sit here and known better because, hey, you know, God told him to do that. That's the point. When I gave Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 28, it was for that reason. Out of a thousand men I've interviewed, only one man is said to be upright, but a woman I found none. Get mad at it. By all means, I'm not going to tell you don't get mad at it. Get mad at it, but when you do get mad at it, don't ball up your fist, but use your mind and say, what can I maintain in the sight of the Most High to distinguish me from amongst the children of men? If I sit here and meet my, if I sit here and meet the male counterpart, if I meet him with this sense of hypocrisy, it's not going to atone for nothing. All it's going to declare is my foolishness and my desire not to be upright, despite the fact that I'm asking him for upright ways to be treated. Hence, how many women say, hey, are there any good men about? They are, but they're trampled underfoot because they were right in front of you and you had no desire to sit here and talk to them and take time with them. A lot of the men I talked to, I did a video on a brother that I'm real close with in Tacoma. And it tripped me out like he was going through what he was going through. He treated this chick right, man. He was treating her right. He gave her the pipe right. He treated her right. What did he get for his labors? Someone that treated him like he done nothing for him. Like, like, like he done nothing for this chick. Like she done nothing for him. Nothing under the sun. He treated her right. He gave her the Johnson right. And she treated him like he was nothing. And he was in places of sorrow, like, yo. What, what did I do to a man which like, look, I make sure you get the Johnson right. I make sure I treat you right. What is your problem, man? What is really your problem, man? And she was on some BS and she just left him. And he was heartbroken. 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 Came home hoping that there were signs of her coming back. I tell him often, that bird you carried was mine, man. It wasn't just yours, it was mine, man. And, you know, I just, I don't know if he knows how much that meant to me. Like, he, I don't think he, or maybe he knows, like, yo, Ray, that's the point, Ray. I haven't. Brothers don't come to me with that type of sympathy. That's the point. Where I'm from, in my line of work, in my origin, I haven't received a sense of empathy. That's the point. You know, when he went through what he went through, I really felt for him. And so in turn, this woman left him and time passed. Woman came to be like, hey, hey, I went back to my ex-boyfriend. And he, he's just been abusing me. He chased me. 
he he abused me. He won't even let me get my phone. And when he heard this, he looked at the phone. Was like, "Do you see a cape on me? Do you see a cape on me? I'm not here to save no hoe. You deal with that." And I'm not like, "Where are all her?" I do not blame him. And whether you accept it or not, the Most High would not hold that against him. I just don't have time to persuade you. Hey, you're a misogynist and that. No, I ain't trying to persuade you of this. I ain't trying to persuade you of this. And you know, many will say, hey, that's misogynistic. You're right. But I'm going to tell you something. The woman that has enough insight to sit here and say, Ray, that's not misogynistic. That is just. I take time and I build with that one. That woman I will take time and build with and comfort in her private moments. Raymond, could you help me with this scripture? Raymond, can you talk to me about this? Raymond, I don't understand this. Raymond, I see this, 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 this. I'm in places where I'm treated to the most high because I'm in places where I'm saying, God, would you sit here and atone for this, 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 this? Because people struggle with that, 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 that from this, 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 this. So the reason why I'm saying this, their daughters of Sarah out there. Their daughters of Ruth out there. Their daughters of Esther out there. I'm seeking them. And when they hear these words, not for one moment would they get offended. They would call me saying, Ray, help me so I can grow in a mutual character. Because I recognize a work that the Most High has placed within you. And I need this work to be taking place within me. I got you covered and you can depend on me. I'm going to do the best that I can. And when they hear these words, they will say, he's really doing the best that he can. Why am I saying this to you all? I'm not saying this to you to appease you. I'm saying this to you so you can grow in insight and awareness. I'm not a persuasive man. I'm not a salesman. I'm not a salesman for one split moment. The reason why I gave this scripture, because you may sit here, a lot of women may cite this for misogynistic. But I tell you this, a lot of men will sit here and say, that's the place that I've been at. And I tell you plain, I feel for no woman like I feel for my brother. Because if I felt for you more than I felt for my brother, I in turn am aiding against the struggle of mankind. And if you seek the most high on these words here right now, he would declare, this much is true. I feel for my brother more. When it pertains to when it pertains to woman, I am so fed. When it pertains to when I talk to a woman, I'm a man of equality. So if a woman says, Raymond, I want equality, I need you to come to me with equality, I will bring to you that equality that you desperately seek. And you can depend on me. You can depend on me. You can depend on me. And when I recognize you carrying off upright ways, and when, and when your counterpart, your husband, your boyfriend, whoever does not carry off in those ways, I will sit here and defend you on your on the back. I will sit here and defend you. And I will speak up on your behalf. You can depend on me. You can depend on me. I would depend on, you could depend on me that I will speak up on your behalf because I recognize the virtue and the character that you maintain within. And you may say, Ray, you're lying, you're this, 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 this. Tell that to my mother figure. I didn't know what a mother was until I met my mother figure. I didn't know what a mother was until I met my mother figure. To the point where my where, where the womb that I came from, I just call it my biological. Keep it at that place. Because my mother figured this is for her to comfort her in her private moments. Why am I saying everything I'm saying to you? For this reason. There are many men who are watching this video saying, yo, you know who kind of mom, my first girlfriend, second girlfriend, what kind of mom, my fifth girlfriend, my sixth girlfriend, what kind of mom is all these people? And I will go in my memory and I'll just sit here and think about this. You may say, hey, that's not the truth. That's not the case. That's no. That is the case. Because the Most High has sent to you men to take away from a sorrow that you carry. But you in turn will not let these men comfort you with the sorrow that you carry. This video my videos are not to uh, to to entertain, but to get you to think. Not now, at least. And even because I said this, I'm gonna do videos. I may do videos pretending to doing music, doing project projects or certain stuff. I am. I'm gonna do things pertaining to that, and you are gonna know where I'm coming from.
the reason why I talk in the manner that I talk is because, to be honest with you, how many sit here and say, hey, where the good man at? I say to you plain. How many leaders, how many men that you wish you had, but you left those same men for dead? How often has the Most High sought to comfort you, bringing you something that you never know, but you met that person with great reproach, in turn saying, where are you at? And the Most High can look at you and laugh and say, I sent it, but you just mocked it. That is the point. Matthew chapter 24, verse 37 to 39. 